Chris Bennett has identified evidence for a religious role for cannabis in a variety of ancient and modern religions, such as Hinduism, Islam, Zoroastrianism, Taoism, but his work regarding evidence in the Bible regarding the use of cannabis by both the ancient Jews and Christians has received the most attention. Please join me in giving Chris a warm welcome as he gives us his um, talk on I want to say the I want to say the name completely correctly. Cannabis in magic and religion: a brief history. Thank you, Chris. Signal of the end of plant prohibition in Canada. You know, a wonderful event like this, and you know the irony of plant prohibition is not to be lost. It's probably got something to do with the oldest myth and most recognized myth in Western culture, that being the story of Genesis and its forbidden plants. So uh, hats off to all who have partaken of the forbidden fruits. You know, cannabis, we're talking about something like cannabis, we're talking about a natural right. And when we're talking about, you know, it's like a right to air or water. And when we're talking about a plant like cannabis, we're talking about a plant that we've had a relationship with, according to current archeological evidence, of tens of thousands of years. Recently, like New Scientist and other magazines have been reporting about uh, a recent uh, 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 essay in a botany journals by a number of academics, saying that 10,000 years ago, independently, in both the East and the West, cannabis was being produced and grown for uh, uh, ceremonial purposes, as well as industrial purposes like fibers for, for hemp and seeds for food. And Carl Sagan, in fact, speculated that humanity began agriculture with hemp. It's certainly old, as old as, as agriculture ourselves and our relationship with it. Sagan used the pygmies in Africa as an example. The pygmies say they have been growing cannabis since the dawn of time, that God gave the pygmies cannabis so they would be healthy and happy. Uh, um, and Christian Ratch, another German ethnobotanist, calls cannabis our first cultural object. Uh, and, and about 5,000 years ago, uh, um, cannabis started to be spread by Indo-European tribes. And we, we know this from the, 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 the evidence that's been left in Indo-European languages, the, the groups of languages including French, German, Dutch, English, as well as Sanskrit, Tocharian, and uh, uh, the Persian language. And the, and, the, and the root word for cannabis, kana, ended up in its own various forms in those languages, and, and etymologists have traced it back. So even before those languages had split up, our ancestors were using cannabis. And, you know, for sure it's the first medicine, as, as Dr. Hanu showed, uh, um, in Assyrian tablets, in uh, Egyptian papyri, in the Pentasau in China, in the Ayurveda of India. Cannabis was probably the first medicine. In fact, recent anthropologists have pointed to African tribes' use of cannabis uh, for parasitic control, saying that prehistoric man likely used it for this purpose as well. And as, as a ceremonial thing, cannabis has been used for at least, we know from archeological evidence, 5,500 years, the oldest evidence coming to us from Ukraine, where cannabis was burned ceremoniously in a, in a, in a, a, a polypod bowl in a cave, which was used to hold the fumes in of cannabis. And our, uh, um, we know these Indo-Europeans spread the use of cannabis throughout the world because we found evidence of cannabis at Celtic sites, at Druidic sites. As well, they spread it even into China. And we have the recent evidence of the Chinese mummies, the uh, Gushi culture, a Caucasian culture that was living in central China from about 2000 BC to 400 BC, where we found perfectly preserved cannabis dating back to 2,700 years ago. Female cannabis, medicinal cannabis. And these, uh, this early spread of cannabis occurred because the early users of cannabis were also the first to domesticate the horse. And it's believed the horse itself uh, um, the domestication of the horse itself took place with hemp ropes. The Indo-European culture is also what led to the Soma cult of India and the Haoma cult of Persia. And recent archaeological evidence shows that this agent beverage, the source of the Hindu religion and the modern Zoroastrian religion, which influenced so many other agent religions, was in fact a preparation of cannabis. We have the evidence of Professor Serianati, a Russian archaeologist, who discovered a huge temple in the Bactria Margiana archaeological complex about the size of a football field from 4,000 years ago. Half the temple was dedicated to making a sacred beverage, and they found residues of cannabis, ephedra, and poppy in this thing. And uh, um, this use continued on in that area of the world where the Zoroastrians would later use it. 
and references in ancient Zoroastrian texts describe Zoroastrian figures like Ardu Bira and King Vishtasma taking strong extracts of cannabis infused into wine and other beverages and having powerful out-of-body experiences, or what they interpreted as out-of-body experiences. And these experiences led to the belief, as Professor Merce Eliad, one of the foremost historians of religion has, has noted, led to the belief that there was some sort of soul that was separate from the body that would survive after death. And this is a major component of many religions. And uh, um, in India, the Soma cult disappeared uh, probably about three, 400 BC. The identity of Soma was lost, but the use of cannabis continued in the cult of Shiva. The oldest continually worship God on earth. His worship goes back to the Stone Age. In India, in the cult of Shiva, cannabis is used to induce a sense of oneness with the universe, the classic mystical state. And it's also used by Sikhs in India, such as the Nihang Sikhs, who are the guardian of the ancient temple sites, and in dedications and tantric rites to the goddess Kali, whose worship also goes back to the Stone Age. In Assyria and Babylonia, magicians and priests alike use cannabis in ceremonies there under the name Kanabu and we know it was used as an incense in the temples as well as a topical preparation in order to increase one's rapport with the gods and ingest it as well. And these Assyrian references are interesting in relation to what is a number of scholars are now pointing to in relation to Hebrew references to cannabis under the name Cannabosum. And this goes back to the work of the Polish etymologist and anthropologist Sula Bennett who suggested the Hebrew term cannabosum was in fact a reference to cannabis. And this cannabosum first appears to Moses, who we have to remember discovered the angel of the Lord in flames of fire from within a bush, uh, when, the, when the ancient voice from the bush commanded him to make a holy oil with about nine pounds of cannabosum mixed with myrrh and cinnamon. And uh, he would apply, this would be applied topically to the priest of the, of the inner chamber. And he would also place some of this oil on the altar of incense. And he would actually speak to the Lord in the pillar of smoke over the altar of incense in an act of capnomancy, divination by smoke. Well, when you throw cannabis into that scenario, what happens is Moses becomes like a shaman, and like shamans in South America or Africa today, who ingest psychoactive substances. Uh, uh, interprets that as an actual possession or uh, uh, contact with another entity. And this is a very powerful, powerful realization for modern religion because what it shows is the plant-based shamanic origins of religion itself in India and in China where the Taoists used it as well. Uh, um, and uh, you know, let me just give you a little portrayal from China. Uh, first a yin, then a yang. No one knows what I do. Jade buds of holy hemp for the one that lives apart. That's a 2,500 year old poem, you know, basically saying life has its ups and downs, but uh, with a little cannabis I can kind of carry on through in that middle road. Same sort of sayings to be found in the Islamic world. Cannabis was incredibly popular amongst dervishes and Sufis and Ishmaelis. And uh, a priest, uh, uh, a sheikh named Hadar in the 11th century said, God has granted you the privilege of knowing the secrets of these leaves, thus when you eat of it, your dense worries may disappear and your exalted minds may become polished. So cannabis has been found at the source of so many ex even existing religions and even pre-existent religions. And I think that what this information is, is is as much a challenge to modern fundamental religion as the myths of Genesis was to Darwin's theory of evolution in that what they show is the plant-based shamanic origins of the religions themselves. And that door that has been closed for so long has once again been opened. Bom Shiva.